Happy Thanksgiving week, everyone. When we finished our last rehearsal on Thursday, we were using our bows to make quality tones on our strings. That's something that most um, orchestras take three to five rehearsals to really get going. So we're really pushing ourselves to make some beautiful music as, as efficiently as possible. Now, we're going to bring four skills together to really get ourselves sounding awesome. We're going to bring together our perfect posture, correct bow hold, reading the notes properly, and having quality intonation, which means playing in tune. All right, so the first two things we're going to do right now are our posture and our bow hold. Now, you're probably thinking, we keep going over this over and over. And you know, it's one of those things that you'll probably have to go over for many years. But the good news is, if you correct it in the beginning, you won't have to worry about it as much in the future. Every time you get your instrument ready to play, and um, you're about to play a song, check out your posture, check out your back, check your bow hold, make sure you have a thumb bump, Violins and violas, make sure you have a pinky on top of the, of the bow. Uh, cellos, make sure you have your pinky laying over the bow. When you get done with the song, I want you to freeze and check where everything is. Cellos, make sure that your thumb is behind your middle finger, okay? And before I go on, cellos, I want you to find an empty toilet paper roll like this. Okay, this is gonna, I know this is weird, but we're gonna use this to practice keeping our fingers curved. And then everyone, I want you to make sure you have a little black marker that you can mark a little X on your hand. Okay, so here we go. Posture. Why do we do the fire drill game? Well, you probably know a few reasons, but the main reason is that when we sit down, our feet should be a shoulder width apart, and when we stand up, they should still be a shoulder width apart. Standing up, sitting down, standing up. You should be able to keep your feet in the exact same spot. So let's try a few tricks to keep ourselves on top of things. I want you to stand, stand right in front of your practice chair. You should have a practice chair with no arm rests. Okay, so let's put our feet together and then make a V with your feet. Now, Step about a shoulder length apart so that your feet are right underneath your shoulders and just kind of sway like a tree in the wind. Okay, keeping your feet in that one spot. Now we're gonna, we're gonna do a sprinter start. That means just bending our knees a little bit like we're about to do a race, okay? Our knees should never be locked. Our knees should never bend backwards. That's never uh, good for our, for our music making. So keep your knees nice and bent, just a little bit, okay? Now sit on the edge of your seat with your feet flat on the floor right where they were when we were standing and make sure your back is nice and straight. Now, um, for cellos, one thing I want us to do with our arm, we pretend like we have a chicken wing a lot, but another thing we can call it is a coat hanger. So your left arm, pretend that there's a long winter coat being draped over your left arm and you don't want it to touch the floor, okay? This way, you'll keep your arm up, okay? And eventually, you're gonna have such strong muscles on that left arm, you're never even gonna remember. Violins and violas, you need to remember nose to scroll, elbow to toe. So remember, when you're holding your instrument, your nose can stay towards the scroll, and there's an imaginary line you can kind of draw from your elbow down to your toe. Okay, so that's something you can remember. Let's get our instruments and try these things. And don't forget to do fire drills at home on your own. Okay, violins and violas, while I'm working with cellos, Make sure that you're putting your shoulder rest on like a smiley face and make sure that it's on securely. Mine's a little bit diagonal and that's fine. Okay, cellos, let's keep our scrolls so that they're a little bit further than our ear and let's make sure 
that our coat hanger is nice and high so that our coats aren't dragging on the floor. Okay, now um, violins and violas, let's bring, I have a new trick for us. Let's put our, um, just like we do, our end button down our neck, bring our jawbone onto the chin rest, and then I want you to um, hug, your, hug yourself and touch your right shoulder. Okay, so do that again. Hug yourself and touch your right shoulder. You should be able to keep your viola and violin perfectly in place. Okay, <clears throat> very good. Now, we're gonna try, for cellos, we're gonna try our toilet paper trick. Um, actually, before we do that, let's get out our pins. So, for cellos, I want us to, first of all, cellos, I'm gonna make it so that we have a, a little monster right here, okay? And our monster has an open mouth. I drew kind of an eyeball. So there's the eye and there's the mouth. Now, this is how your monster's mouth should always be. If you notice that your monster's mouth is closed, then he then he can't eat. So make sure that your monster's mouth is open. Violins and violas, I want you to draw an X. Take your hand that goes on, that goes on the tapes, your, your left hand, and mark an X right here. Do you see where my sloppy X is? Okay. I want you guys to make that X hit the side of the scroll right here, right, or side of the fingerboard, okay? And then, so take your X, take your X and make sure that it's hitting the side of the, of the fingerboard. That way you can put your fingers down perfectly, okay? All right, now, Let's see, let me catch up with my plan. Okay, so just practice putting on your, our, putting our new um, little tricks in play. Make sure, viol cellos, that you've got your mouth opened. And make sure, violins and violas, that you've got your X touching right here, okay, at the, at the first tape of your instrument. Okay. Now, when we, let's go, our, go with our bow hold. I'm gonna use the same thing that I use to um, draw the X in the, in the eye. When we hold our, um, our pencil, we're going to hold it but right at the second section of our fingers, the second segment, okay? And I lay my palm flat and put it down in the second little section of my fingers and I bring my thumb over it like this. Okay, now for cello, for, for cellos, they're gonna leave the pinky laying over. For violins and violas, they're gonna put the pinky on top. Okay, so then my fingers are all spread apart. So I'm gonna bring my second, my middle finger and my ring finger together. That is a nice bow hold. Okay, and you can see that my, the tip of my thumb is touching and my thumb bump there. Okay, now let's try with our bows. And you can do this a few times. Just make sure just a little bit of your fingertips are laying over. Now, grab your bow. Make sure that the very tip of your bow is going to the right. So that means that your bow will be going the opposite of mine if you're watching me. Okay, make sure that your palm is laying flat and that the hair of the bow is facing toward the ceiling. Now, the tip of the bow should be going to the right of you. Lay the bow over the second section of your fingers, almost at the tip, but in the second section, let your thumb go across the palm onto the top of the frog. 
your pinky goes on the top of the stick, we're upside down right now, or over if you're a cellist, and these two fingers here will kind of touch. So for violin and viola, let's turn our bow hold over, and you should have a nice curved hand with a thumb bump here. Cellos, you should have a nice curved hand with, with pinky going over and a thumb bump still just like violin and viola, okay? So we can practice that. Now, here's some things to remember. We have a bunny hand. We never want to have a fox hand. That means that we've hyperextended our thumb. See how my thumb looks like a banana curved backwards? We always want to have a thumb bump and never a hyperextended thumb. So remember that, okay? So let's just make sure that we remember um, we're, tr we're trying with our, th our bows one more time. Lay your bow flat, hair up, the tip is going to the right. Make sure that you're, you're going in the second section of your hand fingers. Your thumb goes across your hand with a thumb bump. The pinky goes on the tip of the stick or it lays over when you play cello. And your ring finger and your third finger lay to get, they touch. Okay, now turn over. Cellos, keep your pinky over and violins and violas, tap the top of your stick. That's, that's how you should hold it. And if you're having trouble holding the bow hold, you can support it with your other, with your left hand because it's going to rest on your instrument. Okay, your, your fingers are just like loose springs. They should never be gripping the bow. Okay, all right, so that's the first half of our lesson and I'm going to make you a video for the second half um, following this one. Talk to you soon.